President Obama did not create the mess we are in. Now, unfortunately, as he reminded you, many people want to blame him. Many people want to act as if he put us into the soup. But you know that's not true. That's not the way it happened. The danger we face, however, is that when we have these kind of challenges and people are thrown into the deep water and they're flailing around, that when the lifeguard comes in to save them, you can pull down the lifeguard. So what you have to do is think, is this person really saving me? And the issue isn't, am I in deep water? Because we knew we were in deep water. That's why the lifeguard jumped in. That's why you worked so hard to vote for a new leadership and a new change in direction for this country. So you understand that's not how you got in. The question is, is the person taking you towards safety? Are you moving towards the shore? If you're moving towards the shore, if you're gonna fight them, you're not gonna to get to the shore. You're gonna stay in the deep water. So we need your help because, as Bill pointed out, when the president took office, the economy had shrunk four continuous quarters, a whole year, a whole year where the economy had fewer out, less output and fewer jobs, less output and fewer jobs, less output and fewer jobs, less income, less wealth, one straight year. Now, Bill talked about Franklin Roosevelt. Economists were so convinced in the 1930s that there could not be such a thing as unemployment on a massive scale, that we didn't have theories to talk about it, and therefore we had no reason to measure it. So you will hear people talk about the Great Depression and they will try and give you numbers for it, but the reality is that economists didn't measure the Great Depression. As a result of the Great Depression, there are some economists who got convinced that yes, in fact, you can't have unemployment, you better measure it. That there is such a thing as a gross domestic product, you, you, you need to have a measure for it. So when you hear people talk about the Great Depression, what we have done as economists is go back and recreate some numbers the best we can to figure out what we think it looked like. It's like a tree fell in the forest, nobody heard it, and what we're doing is we've gone back and said, well, the tree was this big, this fell, uh, it must have sounded like. And we're trying to give you what it sounded like. In fact, the current chair of the Council of Economic Advisors for President Obama, her whole career has been on how well do we know the numbers from the Great Depression. And she's concluded that not very well. So the reality is that this is the worst economy on record. We've never recorded a failure of the US economy of this magnitude. That's what the president took over. That's the stew we got thrown into. So when George Bush left one straight year of decline, that was the worst ever. When he was sworn, when George Bush was sworn into office on, in January of 2001, and then left office in January 2009, there were fewer Americans on payroll in January of 2009 than in January of 2001. No president on record has ever left office with fewer Americans employed than when they were sworn in. That is what President Obama inherited. So the worst ever for any president on creating jobs, and the worst ever in terms of the magnitude of a downturn. Now, as Bill pointed out, what has happened since? Well, the president came in January of 2009. By March of 2009, he had put in place the Recovery Act. And so if we look from March of 2009, the economy has grown at a 10% switch from negative 6.4 to plus 3.2% in terms of growth, a 10-point switch in terms of the growth path. 
when the president came into office in January and February as we were putting the Recovery Act into place, we were losing six and 700,000 jobs a month. And last month we were able to announce that we gained over 230 jobs on the plus side. So are we where we're supposed to be? No, we are not safe yet. We're still in the deep water, but we're moving to the shoreline. And so when you judge the president, and they ask you, why don't I have a job now? You didn't have a job two years ago. <laughs> the president understands this is not the right unemployment number. But he also understands we have to move towards the solution. If you go down into the valley, you're still going to be in the valley as you get your way out. So we haven't made our way out, but we're moving our way out. I don't want to go through all of our program from the Recovery Act because I want to engage you about where we're still going because we're not there yet. And as we get there, what is the there that we're trying to get to? And it's not that everything was okay before. We don't really want to go back to the last eight years when we generated no jobs. That's not the there we're trying to get to. We really don't want to go back to where the wages of American workers were not moving with the productivity of American workers. That's not where we want to go back to. So I want to engage you on laying the foundation of where we need to go and where we're trying to go. My immediate boss is Secretary Hilda Solis. She sends you her greetings. And the where we want to go is that we want to create good jobs for everyone. And she means everyone. What's a good job? A good job is a job that is going to get us back to a middle class in America. A good job is a job that lets you have a future for your children security in your retirement, access to a decent pension, decent health care, that's a good job. A good job is a safe job. You should be able to come home at night from going to work. And unfortunately, we have lived through some very big tragedies, the 11 workers who were lost, on the platform that BP is now trying to solve the oil leak for, the over 20 workers lost in the mines in West Virginia recently. So I want to engage you on some of the steps that you can take to help us and then I'm gonna sit down. 